We chant that passage every morning, every night. May you forever be well. And the question is, how are you going to be forever well when there's aging, illness, and death all around, separation all around? The Buddha realized the only answer was that you have to look for something that doesn't age, grow ill, or die. Something that's not separated from the things you depend on. That can be found only inside. This is why we meditate, is to find that thing. John Sawat, who was the, the monk who founded our, our monastery, shortly before he died, he had been in a bad automobile accident and suffered brain damage. And he was commenting that his mind was sending him a lot of strange perceptions. His brain wasn't functioning, but at least he had the mindfulness to know that it was strange, not fall for whatever the brain was sending him. He stopped for a second and he said, he said but that thing I got from the meditation, that hasn't been touched. It's something that can be found inside, and we touch it, but then nothing else can touch it. That's what we're looking for. So how are you going to find it? It requires a lot of discernment to see what you're doing to cover it up, because it, because it is something that's uncaused. It's potentially always there. Which means we can't see it, and that means we can't see it because our, our discernment isn't sharp enough. So we need to sharpen our discernment. How do you do that? You get the mind to be very still. So it can see slight movements of the mind. Things that we do day in, day out. To the point where we hardly notice them. So you've got to get back and Refamiliarize yourself. Look at the present moment with new eyes. We we'll start with the breath. Look at the breath in a new way. We usually think of the breath as the air coming in and out of the lungs. But the Buddha wants you to look at what is it in the body that makes the air come in, lets it go out, that energy flow. Look at that. And notice how the energy flow feels. There's a healthy energy flow, there's an unhealthy one. You want to promote a healthy one inside because it makes it a lot easier to stay here in the present moment. So you can watch things carefully. So you give rise to what's called this state of becoming, this sense of you right here in the body, right here, right now. And you try to nurture that, you try to feed that. Breathing in a way that feels good. You can ask yourself, well, what, what feels good? What is good about it? Well, you can try different ways of breathing and see what feels best. This is one of the ways in which you develop your discernment. Because discernment isn't just watching things. It's also learning how to judge things, which is better than something else. Is long breathing better or short breathing better? You start out that way. And then those questions move deeper and deeper into the mind. But first you start with the breath. This is a good place to make yourself sensitive to the present moment. We're sensitive to so many things outside, and yet we miss a lot of what's happening right here, right now. And the breath is obviously something happening right here, right now, so you work with that. And as you're working with the breath, you get a stronger and stronger sense of your mind here in the present moment, your awareness here in the present moment. Until ultimately the breath gets so refined and the breath energy is so filling the body that the in and out breath gets shorter 
don't try to make it shorter. Think instead of the the breath energy, all the channels, all the nerves, all the different ways that the breath energy can flow in the body. Think of everything being connected. And John Lee's image is of cutting a whole network of roads through a wilderness. The better the roads are connected, the more you can get around. I remember when I first went to Thailand, there were basically two main roads leading out of Bangkok. One went up to Chiang Mai and the other went up to Adon. And even though Chiang Mai was closer to Udon than it was to Bangkok, if you had to go to Udon, you had to go down to Bangkok and then back up again, because there were just the two main roads. Now they've got roads all over the place. It's very easy to get around. And you want to kind of promote that same sense of the flow of the breath energy in the body, moving around in the body, connecting everything. And when everything's connected, then there's no sense of lack. And then the breath grows naturally shorter on its own that way. And as the breath gets more and more still, then you can see the movements of the mind that much more clearly. There's less interference. It's like the shuffling noise here in the, in the sala when we're chanting, you don't hear it. And then when everyone's still, ah, you can hear the shuffling. It's the same in your mind. When the breath is very, very still, you see movements in the mind that you didn't notice before. You see how the mind's perceptions say, create a sense of where your body is right now, and having a sense of the shape of the body, and how that perception can be dropped. Now what have you got? Just a little a cloud of little sensation points. If you want, you can focus on the space between the points. That gets even more refined. You keep going deeper and deeper into your awareness of the present moment, and you begin to see how much of it is constructed. You put it together by focusing on some feelings here, or focusing on perceptions there, or thinking about this, evaluating that, noticing this, noticing that. And the things we notice, the things we pay attention to, attention to, that's going to shape your experience. And what you try to do is deconstruct that, so you can see more and more subtle layers of stillness inside, and then more and more subtle layers of movement that you didn't detect before. This is the process of meditation. It goes deeper and deeper, right here, right here, right here. Not deeper in the sense that it's going to go down into the earth, but deeper inside. There's a sense you're getting closer and closer and closer to kind of this, the center of your awareness. So you can see even more subtle movements right there. The part of the mind that wants to direct this and say, focus here, focus there. That gets thrown into sharp relief. Then you ask yourself, well, who's talking to whom in here? You start questioning the very, very basic movements of the mind. Until you see an opening where there are no movements of the mind at all. That may sound very abstract, but once you get there, you realize that it really is the end of all suffering, and it's there's nothing lacking there. Some people are afraid that you go to nirvana and you miss all your old friends, or you miss this and miss that, and the Buddha kept saying, don't think in those ways. There's nothing missing. There's nothing lacking there. But we define ourselves around our our families, our friends, our jobs, all these other things, and we're afraid we're going to lose them. But look at them very carefully. This is why the Buddha talks about aging, illness, and death so much, because the happiness we're looking for out of other people, no matter how much they want to provide it, they can't always be there. And 
And if our happiness is built on things like that, it's going to, it's going to suffer. So you need something stronger inside that you really can depend on. That's why we're looking in here. Just how, learn how to look really, really carefully. Because there's no other safe place on earth, or in any world. As long as the mind is creating worlds, it's going to create worlds that are going to fall apart. But this is something you don't create. It's something you find. Which is something very different. So no matter what happens, and in John, John Sowet's case, it was a, a bad accident. But still, he had this thing inside, as he said. No accident could touch it. So until you find it, be confident that it's there. And when you find it, then you don't have to believe in it anymore, because it's there. There's that famous passage where the Buddha asks Sariputta, do you believe that by developing the five faculties of conviction and persistence, mindfulness, concentration, discernment, that they lead to the deathless? And Sariputta says, no, I don't believe that. I know. I'll try to get to the point where you can say that, too. 